Good morning, everyone. My record, uh, by my clock, that's 10.30, so uh, let's get started. For those of you just joining us, please feel free to share your details in the chat. Um, love to hear about all the different organisations using Upshot across the country, even internationally, and all the great work that you're doing. So um, lovely to fill that in. So please, uh, please do share. Um, welcome to the sixth in our Upshot community webinar series. Uh, we've been covering lots of subjects. And just a reminder to all, that you'll find recordings of all the previous webinar, webinars on our website. Um, we have shared that link quite a lot and we will share it with the follow-up again. Um, but if you go onto um, into the Upshot website, you'll see that. Um, this morning, uh, we'll be sharing the screen with uh, my colleague, Jason Mikowski, um, who many of you will know through um, support calls and training um, and setups uh, and various engagements he's had with lots of uh, lots of organisations, particularly sports charities, local authorities and universities. And Jason will be joining us from his home in South London. Um, please do use the chat as well throughout the, um, the call today. Um, post your questions. Um, we're going to be looking at surveys in some depth uh, this morning. Um, please feel free to share questions. We won't be able to answer everything um, possibly during the call, but we will try um, through the chat. Um, and then also we'll follow up with you after the, after the call this morning as well. Um, once again, uh, just to reiterate, always check with your team, your funders, your managers. Um, Upshots are used in very many different ways by different organisations. And so we'll be sharing ideas with you today, um, but always check that it is relevant and um, the right thing to do for your um, organisation. Um, the session will be recorded, as I say, so we'll be putting that onto the website again and also letting people know um, about that afterwards. So we are recording at the moment. Um, so if we go to the uh, demo account, just where we'll be showing you all the things to do with surveys this morning. And you'll see that our support, um, as you, as many of you know, you've been on some of these webinars before um, and also been in contact with us over the last few months. Our support is running as normal. We're supporting, we're, we're giving training um, to lots of organisations and onboarding new organisations as well. So um, everything is as normal. If you need any help with anything to do with Upshot, please feel free to contact us on the, on the uh, support email address that's showing now and also obviously the telephone as well, um, just give us a call. Um, we'd love to hear from, hear from you and help you um, with all the activities you're doing on Upshot. So without further ado, um, thanks to everyone. And uh, I'm gonna hand over to Jason, uh, who's gonna guide us through everything to do with surveys. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Len, thanks for the introduction. And thanks again for joining us on our webinar this morning, um, covering all things surveys. So we know that increasingly organizations are looking to record richer evidence through Upshot. Um, so not just recording the amazing information you get on participants and uh, their demographics and personal details or even their participation, but looking to send questionnaires or feedback forms, um, report on individual outcomes. So a fantastic way to do this is via the Upshot surveys function. And today we will show you how you can create surveys on Upshot collect responses and analyze the results. As usual, I just want to highlight the fantastic guides we have on the system covering this area. And as you know, all of our guides sit under the support section on your Upshot account. So you can just click on the top right here on guides. We have lots of fantastic user guides with screenshots and step-by-step -step instructions. And you can see there's three guides just dedicated to surveys um, covering all the three different areas we will be touching on today's uh, webinar as well. Um, as Lynn has already mentioned, a quick note for those of you who use Upshot delivery accounts as part of a funded agreement, uh, please check with your funders first before using Upshot surveys and don't make any changes to surveys that may already be set up in your account by your funders. And we do appreciate that surveys can be um, a more complicated uh, form of evidence collection. Um, so do feel free to get in touch with us if you are planning on using a survey or questionnaire um, and you're not quite sure about the best format um, or that the results will come out in the way that you intended, feel free to get in touch with us when you've drafted it um, and we can help you through that process um, as part of our support services as well. But hopefully after this webinar, you'll feel very comfortable and confident going into um, this feature of Upshot. 
Okay, so let's start off with the first part of our webinar this morning, which is survey creation. So our survey sits under the evidence tab at the top here, and you can see there's two buttons, create surveys and show surveys. And the show surveys is uh, where your existing surveys will sit. So all the ones that you've previously created or drafted. So to create a new survey, literally all we do is click on the create survey button like so. Okay, here we go. So it brings up um, this add survey form, and this is what it looks like. Now, this is obviously a blank one, and you can see there's actually all instructions already on the page on um, the kind of next steps from here. Now, I have previously um, saved a, a draft survey for this morning's session. Um, so rather than populating this empty form, what I'm actually going to do is to go into our show surveys library, and you can see here the ones that we've previously used or previously created on this account. And the one I'm going to be using today is this draft survey. And you can see if you've gone in and saved a draft, it will just show up here with the option to update it. So that's what I'm going to do this morning. And what I've done here is I've already added a survey title. So this is obviously the name of your survey. And this will be seen by participants who are filling out the survey online once you've sent it or shared it with them. Um, so do think about what the, the survey title will be. And then you can add a little description um, again, addressing your audience, addressing the participants, filling out the questionnaire. Um, so this could be any uh, instructions for how to fill out the answers. It could be giving a bit of information about why you're collecting um, that information from them. So as I scroll down, you can see we can create three different survey types. And what this refers to is actually how those surveys are going to be shared and sent out to your participants and how you're collecting the responses for them from them. So the first one I'm going to show you is the standard option, which links um, the survey that you've created directly to participants' profiles on your account. So all those attendees that you've already added to the system have their own account linked to their name on the system. You can then share that survey with them. It will sit on their profile, and you can choose to collect the responses for them in a few different ways. And that includes email, that includes collecting the responses in person, or even our survey app, which I'm going to um, explain a little bit more about later on. You also have the option of sending those participants, uh, those attendees who have profiles on your account, um, an anonymous survey. And that only works via the email function. So essentially, you email them the survey link, they fill it out online, submit the responses, and it comes back into the account. But the responses are collected anonymously. So you won't be able to see who has submitted which response. And finally, we have the option to send a public link. Now, this can be then shared with anyone. Um, they don't have to be participants that already sit in your Upshot account. It's just a public web link that you can share and that anyone can submit, click on the link and submit a survey response. Okay, so those are our three different um, survey types. Now, the first one I'm going to start with is the standard option and how we create questions and uh, design the, the survey. So to start, what we would do is click on our question menu up here. It's just a drop down menu and it shows all the different types of questions we can include in our survey from text answers, whole number answers, different types of drop down menus, scale answers. So you can see as I scroll down here, I've already done that. So literally all you do is you click on one of the options, let's say a text answer, and it drops that question to the bottom of your survey. So this is a blank one. And the left part of the screen is a preview of what the question will look like to your participants. And on the right is where we actually edit the question. So this is where we would type in the, um, the actual question text. You can see we also have the option to add some help text. Like so. And we can choose whether to make that field required or not. So when someone's filling out the survey, do they have to submit a response to this particular question in order to submit the entire survey? And that's obviously great to make sure you have consistency in your data collection. But for some questions, that may not be appropriate. So I'm just going to scroll up here on my survey to show you some of the other questions I've created, one for each different type. So we can see here a text box. Remember that when you're analyzing the results for a text box, the system won't be able to read and the free text in the box. So this is make, making sure that you can then manually go through the responses in a text box field. This is a, um, a 
um, count answer, so um, a whole number answer. So people would fill in here a number, but they can also use these up and down arrows to select a, a whole number. You can include um, ranks and scales. So the little uh, pencil button here allows you to edit the question. And for instance, for a scale question like this, I can actually start the scaling at zero, so I can do that. Or I can change um, the range, uh, anything below 10, so I can go one to five, for instance. And what I often want to do uh, with a scale question is actually add in the help text what the scale means. So I've added here a one, for instance, in this case means they're not satisfied with the event, or 10 is they're completely satisfied. We can have yes, no questions. So they literally just have a binary choice here. Um, single choice drop down menus allow you to add multiple choices that people can select from, but they can only select one on that drop down menu. And what you can do here with uh, certain types of questions as well, you can copy the question. So if you have multiple questions in your survey with the same options, so sometimes you have options that like agree, disagree, uh, totally agree, and you have multiple questions in a row that follow that same format, you can then copy that question type to make that uh, design creation of the survey quicker. For multiple choice options, it looks very much the same, uh, similar to when you're creating a single choice drop down. But in this case, um, the participant has the option to select multiple, right? So it's like a tick box exercise. And I often then like to clarify in the help text whether they can just select one option or select multiple options, depending on what the drop down menu is. We can include date fields like this one. And we can have counts where we're counting multiple things on the same question. So in this case, how many events have you attended in the last year? They can type in, I attended one workshop, um, three celebration dinners, lots to celebrate, and three sports training events, for instance. Okay, so when I get to the bottom, I can then save that as a draft if I need to get back to it. Remember, this is an online system. So if you're not saving a draft as you're going, the system, and you then you log out, the system won't remember that you've done this piece of work. So make sure that throughout um, you're always uh, saving a draft of the survey. Um, but once you're happy with it and you're happy that the um, survey creation is as you want it, you just click save on it. Um, now, before I do this, actually, there's one more thing to show you on here. I can change the order of these questions. So once I've created them, I can just drag and drop the order of them um, and just to change the, the design of the survey. OK, great. So now I'm happy with the survey and I'm going to click save. And once you click save, you can't go back and edit it again. So do make sure you have the questions in the way that you want them before you click save. And that covers survey creation. So hopefully fairly straightforward. The next element of, um, of the AppShot survey feature is then obviously sharing it with your participants. So now we're on the next screen. We see we've got the created questions down here. And we now want to share this with our participants. And there's potentially three ways to do this with a standard um, survey like this. Um, first off, you also have this copy functions, which allow you just, if you were sending a similar survey at a later date, and you just want to change a few of the questions, you can copy this set of questions into an entirely new survey. And if you have not collected any survey responses yet, you can also choose to retire. The survey just essentially means you delete it. But for now, we want to send it or share it with our participants. So the first option might be to email it out to participants. So if you've collected their email addresses on their AppShot profiles, and you've also got their consent to share surveys with them, you can send it directly to them by email. What I mean by that, if I just go onto one of my participants' um, profiles, you can see I've got their email address in the right field. And also one of the permission boxes is, is happy to receive surveys via Upshot. You do need to make sure that one's ticked if you're planning to email someone um, a survey link. Okay, so going back into our um, survey. I click on send. And this now gives us different options to share this with our participants. So I can either choose to and select them just by typing in their names. So as we just had Catherine, for instance, or I also want to send it to Jeff, and we can add them to a list of recipients. Or we can just select them from a long drop down of all of our um, kind people in our database. Or it gives us smarter option to select our audience. 
So I can, for instance, send it to everyone in our database directly without having to select them individually. Um, we can send it to everyone who's taken part in at least one of our sessions, one of our activities. Everyone who's attended at least one activity in a particular project. So if I've got multiple projects on my account, for instance, on this one, I have three, I could choose it to send it to everyone who's taken part in our support programs. Or everyone who's taken part in a particular activity. So in this case, I might want to send it to everyone who's taken part in our dance sessions, for instance. If I want to break it down even further, I can use our people report filters. So I can also choose to send it to particular people in an age range or who live in a certain postcode area who have taken part in a certain number of sessions. So all of the wonderful options we know through our people report, we can include in this as well. So in this example, I'm just going to send this event feedback survey to everyone who's taken part in our dance sessions. Okay. I can even choose particular sessions, uh, so particular registers, but I'm going to send it to anyone who's ever attended a dance session, which you can see the system recognizes 10 people that refers to. Now, it also notices, uh, it also shows me how many of them are notifiable. So how many of them could I actually send it to directly by email? And uh, again, that refers to whether or not I have their email address or and whether I have a, their consent on their profile to send them surveys from Upshot. If I want to send it to them by email, I then go on to fill out this form. But there's another way to do it, which is to not send it to them by email, but just link it to their profiles. And that is appropriate if, for instance, I am collecting their survey responses on paper. So if you've given them a paper copy of the survey and um, they've gone home or they're just filling out the session and then they're returning it, you can just link the survey to their profile and then complete it on their behalf. Just type in the responses as you get them. A third option is that you might actually want to do this in a session. So at a session, you might have a tablet or you might have a laptop and you get people, you click on their names once you've linked the survey to their profiles and they come up to the screen or they come up to the tablet and they fill out the survey responses directly into the account. And this is where our survey app comes in useful as well. I'm not going to show you this directly on the, um, on the webinar this morning, how this works, but essentially we do have a survey app that you can download from the iOS app store or from the Android store. Um, it does take a bit of um, setting up, which we would help you with. Um, and essentially you can use it to directly collect responses from participants in a session. So that might be useful in a classroom setting or when you're doing a session, a sports session, for instance, and you've got people there, you're collecting their responses on a mobile device, you know, whether it be a phone or a tablet, and you can even collect responses from them directly when you're offline and then upload them into the system later. But the survey app is purely for um, response collection. It's not designed for survey creation or sending it out. So it's just for that collection piece. If you do have any questions around that, um, Lynn will be posting a, uh, the guide to our survey app in uh, the chat. And do feel free to contact us uh, if you've got any questions on how to employ it in your organization. OK, so what we're going to do in this example is send it by email. So the first thing I need to do is come up with a deployment name. Survey deployments are essentially like folders and allow you to send out the same survey multiple times. So for instance, in this case, I'm sending it out to my dance group, but next week I might want to send the event feedback to one of our employment workshops or one of our other sports sessions. Um, so different audiences, or you can send the same survey to the same audience, but at different points in time. So sometimes organizations want to measure the change in responses over time. So they might say, uh, we're going to collect um, a, a baseline um, of survey responses when the project first starts or when people first start participating. And then we're going to collect the survey responses again after three months or six months or at the end of the project and see how the responses have changed. And so in order to do that, we create deployments of that same survey. So we put in a deployment name here, and this is not visible to participants. And um, so this can just be an internal reference. So in this case, I'm going to say um, dance uh, sessions. So this will help me remember that I've sent out the survey to all of our dance participants. We then include um, basically the body of our email that we're going to send to our participants here. And remember, they will also see when they click on the link, uh, the description at the top of the survey. So you don't need to repeat those instructions, but it could just be a little friendly message. Thanks for taking part in our dance sessions. Please give us some feedback. OK. Um, now, when you do send an email through the survey function on Upshot, it will come from a no reply at upshot.org email address. So it will come from a fairly generic email address.
But if they hit reply on that email, you can choose what email it gets sent to. So it always defaults to your own, the user who's logging in, but you can choose another organizational email address as well if you want to. And then of course you need to choose a closing date. So by when do you want those responses to come in? When do you want to start analyzing the results? So for instance, in this case, I might choose the end of July. Now, before I send it out, I can actually preview my email. Like so, you can see this is roughly the body of what it will look like. And I've got an example here that I can show you where I have sent it out. This is actually from an anonymous survey. So if you're collecting the responses anonymously, but it would say a survey from, and then whatever your organizational name is, it's got the uh, title in there from their profile. It's got the link to the survey um, online. It reminds them that this, in this case, it's an anonymous survey. And you can see they can choose to reply to it, or it has the relevant GDPR um, information about being able to unsubscribe and so on. Okay, so if that was it, if I was happy to send this out to my 10 participants, I would just click send here and it would send them an email. Now, the alternative was to not send them an email and just attach it to their profiles. So if I want to do that, I click on that button and it takes out the emailing references, so the email address and the email body, and it just includes the um, deployment name and the closing date. I'm going to generate it here and click yes, generate. Now, this is going to attach the survey to those 10 profiles. And this takes us now into our deployment. You can actually see we can change the deployment name anytime. We can go back into that and add information. So for instance, if we said, oh, actually, I wanted to rem remind myself um, what time of year we sent this out. So this might be our June, uh, sorry, July now, 2020 deployment. I'm just going to save it like that. Um, so you can see we've got our participants listed and none of us have so far completed it. So we may have given them paper, paper forms to fill it out. They haven't returned them yet. But once they do, I can just click on Catherine's name and click complete, or am I at the session with Catherine? I'm handing her the laptop, I'm handing her the tablet, and I click complete, and she can fill out the responses directly now on the account itself. This would also sit on their profile. So if I go to Catherine's profile here, and scroll down, on the right, you can see there's outstanding surveys and completed surveys. So these are previous responses. And for the outstanding ones, I can also just click on the link here. And again, it takes me to that page um, where she or I on her behalf can fill out the survey responses directly. Okay, if we go to our survey library, this is now where the survey sits that we've just created. You can see there's a few here, but there's the event feedback standard option that we've just sent out. Now, I quickly want to show you what this looks like uh, in the other options. So if I had an anonymous survey, it would look exactly the same. I would send out the survey. Here's a deployment I've already created. I would send out the survey just the same, except I don't have the option of just attaching it to their profiles. I have to send it to them by email. And if I have my public survey, so this is where we create a public survey link. I go in here and instead of sending it to people, I just generate a survey link. And again, it will ask me to create a deployment and a closing date. I click generate survey link and that's what it does. So then if I go into my deployment here, I can see what that link is and I can share it with people. Okay. In our standard surveys and in our anonymous surveys, we may want to add participants to that deployment at a later date. So for instance, if we had, um, oops, sorry, if I go back into my standard one, if we um, had you know, more people attending our dance sessions, I don't have to create a new deployment to send it out to that new group. I can extend my closing date at any point and I can add participants. So I can just click on that and then use the same filters as before to select the new participants who have attended our dance sessions. Okay, now that's um, survey, uh, adding new people into surveys and survey deployment. Um, now I appreciate it's already getting close to five to 11. The last bit I'm going to show you this morning is how to analyze the results. Um, if you do have to rush off at 11 a.m., um, then we, will, we are recording this session, so you can always review the last bits. But if you are able to stick on a bit longer, we won't overrun for much. Um, but I just want to make sure I show you all the different relevant bits for survey analysis once the results are in. Great. Okay, so we've sent out our surveys. We've added people into it. Um, we've collected the responses either by email or by in person or through the paper responses. And what I'm going to show you here is this is a survey, the Warwick Edinburgh, uh, Edinburgh Mental Wellbeing Scale that a lot of different organizations use. 
and I'm going to view our responses here and we can see we've sent it out twice. Now on the screen immediately, I can see how many people I've sent it to and what our response rate is. So that's super helpful. You can see here I've created a baseline and a follow-up deployment. So I sent it out at the start and at the end of the project. And the intention is to be able to compare the server results over time. Now, as the survey results come in, I can choose to download all of the results into Excel across both deployments from here. So I just click on that download all results button. And I've done that previously. So if I open up these four results, um, this is what it would look like. So they just come out each response as a separate line. Now this is a standard survey. So we do have uh, their names in here. We have their participant IDs. We have the date of when it was submitted and their response. So this is a scale survey. So each response is just a scale option from one to five. And these are the different questions. And I've applied a filter at the top and I can now, if I want to compare the same participants email, um, sorry, responses for both baseline and follow-up survey, I can just filter by their name or by their participant ID. So I could say, show me both responses for Catherine, for instance. And then I've got her baseline survey and a follow-up survey right on top of each other for, and I can do further analysis or graph this if I want to. I can also go into each uh, deployment separately. So I could go into the baseline deployment here, for instance, and just view the responses for that. So I can see, right, 10 from the 12 participants have completed it so far. I can see these two haven't completed it yet. I can view individual responses. Or I could scroll down and on screen, it will actually show me a statistical analysis for each question. So it will highlight the percentage of the people, the respondents who filled out each question and what their answer on the scale from one to five was. I can actually print this off directly from this page as well. If I want to get these bar graphs, I can just right click print and it will come out uh, quite nicely formatted um, and you can print it off directly from here. And again, I can also download the raw results just for this particular deployment into Excel, clicking on the download results button, and it will look uh, similar to the other one I've just shown you. Now, the beauty of doing standard or anonymous uh, surveys through Upshot is that we can use a comparison tool to analyze the responses over multiple uh, deployments. And um, this works, there's certain ways you have to set up the survey in order to allow you to do this comparison on screen. For instance, the questions that you want to include in the comparison need to be um, marked as required. So every participant fills out those particular questions. Um, it needs to be um, statistical questions only. So things like single choice drop downs, yes or no answers, and um, the counts can be included in this. But something like a text box, you wouldn't be, include, be able to include in this on screen comparison through the system. And finally, it will obviously only compare responses for people who filled out both deployments that you're comparing. So it will only show me from those uh, nine, for instance, here that I have filled up both the baseline and the follow-up. So I can, if I had multiple deployments, I could choose which ones I want to compare. So in this case, I want to compare the baseline with follow-up. I click compare. And it now shows me on screen, right, nine people have filled out both the before and the after survey, the baseline and the follow-up. And it shows me each question, a statistical breakdown of what those results were. So I can see in the first survey, most people rank themselves quite low on the scale for the first question. So whether or not they're feeling optimistic about the future. But by the second survey, you know, a few months into your program, they're feeling much more optimistic. Most people here have filled out much higher um, ranks on that second survey. We can see the average change in the responses between the first and the second. So on average, people rank themselves a two on the first one, a four on the second. So that's an increase of two whole points between the first and the second survey. You can see the average uh, deviation, sorry, from the mean. So from that average, um, we can also see how many people had a positive result. So only one person had no change between the first and the second survey, but eight individuals had a much more positive response on the second survey. So all, a lot of the statistical analysis that you're usually doing with your survey results is already displayed to you here on screen. And we can see this for every single question. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we also see the survey results side by side for our individuals. So if I had Lindsay here, for example, I can see side by side what you tick for the first response and for the second survey. Okay, now the beauty of this formatting is that we can also download the results into Excel in this comparison view. So if I open this up, uh, I've did the, the, again done this previously um, for this particular survey. It looks like this. 
you can download it into Excel and it shows you the same um, view that we've just seen on screen, but you can obviously now in Excel manipulate this further. If you want to, you can create graphs from here, for instance, you can work out different summaries and, and, and averages. So you can see here each question, the first survey, the second survey results, it gives you that statistical analysis of the averages and the number of positive changes. And again, I've got each individual responses right next to each other. So we don't need to do what I did on the raw results, which was to filter by them manually. It already has the first and the second survey responses next to each other here in this format. So if I now want to graph this, so these are Lindsay's results, and I want to plot um, how her responses have changed over time. A nice example to do here is the radar chart. And this just gives you a great, great sort of visual uh, reference. So this is her first server responses and her second server responses. And we can see how her optimism and how her response to the questions, how her mental well-being has grown over time um, between that first and that second survey, hopefully as a result of taking part in your programs. Okay, so um, that takes us to the end of our webinar this morning. So we've covered how to create webinars, uh, sorry, create surveys through our survey tool and how to um, then go and review those surveys. One thing that I haven't mentioned, which is quite a recent um, addition to um, our survey function is standardized questions and sharing surveys from the FO account. So I'll briefly just show you that now. So when I create a new survey, I now actually have the option to include standardized responses, uh, sorry, standardized questions. And this is basically a library of questions that you can create yourself as an organization. You can do so through the admin uh, bar here under standardized questions. And it basically allows you to create questions once and include them in multiple different surveys. So if you have certain questions which you know you will use in different feedback forms and different assessment forms and different surveys, sorry, that you're sending out, you can uh, create them in advance just once and then just select them from um, a drop down menu. So in this case, for instance, uh, many sports organizations um, want to um, see what the increase in activity levels has been over time. And so this is a common question that's asked and you can just add this to your survey. You don't need to configure it anymore. It's already in this uh, scale format that you need and uh, you just add it to any question, any survey. And so this is fantastic to do. If you can link it to your outcomes, you can tag those uh, survey questions to, to, make, to help you find them more easily uh, later on. And the great thing about this is that funders and facilitator organizations on Upshot can do this from their Upshot account and share this with their delivery organizations. They can even now create an entire survey from the FO account and pull it down and share it with all of their delivery organizations. So before we had to go into each delivery organization separately and create a survey for them if you wanted to do standardized data collection from the FO view, but now you can create that survey and share it with your delivery organizations directly. And that will then display on the delivery organization account under the shared surveys tab here. You can see here, I've created one on our FO account, which push, pushes down. And um, as, a, as a delivery organization, all I need to do then, I don't need to worry about the survey creation. I can literally just send it out and share it with my participants. So this is a super powerful tool. And um, if you do want to find out more about this and how to employ this in your organization and across multiple delivery organizations, then do please get in touch with us and we will um, help you to set that up on your account. Okay, I promise now that is it. I apologize, I've uh, run over by a few minutes. Um, again, just want to highlight our fantastic um, guides on this. We even uh, created a guide recently, and again, Lynn will share this in the chat and in our follow email later on today on um, accredited guides, uh, accredited surveys. So surveys that are often used in our sector, whether by different charities, by different sports organizations, that we can easily employ on Upshot and now we can easily set up for you and with you. Um, so uh, yes, absolutely fantastic. Another fantastic tool there. Um, so yes, uh, feel free to get in touch about any surveys that you can create if you're unsure where to get started or want to make changes to existing um, uh, surveys or improve them, feel free to get in touch. Brilliant. Thanks, Jason. Um, we've had a few questions and I think the standardized questions have been um, really popular with a lot of people and it's a really good um, example 
of um, developments that have happened, particularly in this survey area. The survey tool now on Upshot is, um, is, is really comprehensive, as uh, hopefully you've seen that today. Um, so thanks very much for, for staying on a little bit, little bit longer. Um, I can see from the chat that people really appreciated that, Jason, it's really good. Um, the next time we will be running an Upshot question time. So we will be sharing details uh, with you very shortly to all users, how to put your question in, if you wanna share a particular um, solution that Upshot has helped you with, um, we'll be uh, glad to do that as a kind of finale to this current series. Um, but meanwhile, uh, we'll also be sending a survey. <laughs> so first-hand experience uh, to, to get your feedback on this webinar. And um, we, we really want your feedback because we plan to do a lot more webinars in the future. So thanks very much for joining us today and uh, stay safe. And we look forward to uh, speaking to you again very soon. Thanks very much. <laughs>